<laughs> wow. Just wow. Hello, everybody. This is Thomas4812 Man Fan here. And what the heck was that Bristol dirt race? Oh my goodness. Wow. What a race. That was that was crazy. I literally have nothing to say for that ending. I literally have no words. I am speechless. Chase Briscoe literally dives in into the corner on Tyler Reddick. They both spin out. And then Kyle Busch comes and takes the win. What? That, that is... Oh my god. This is honestly like the Bush clash last year with a Chase Elliott and Ryan Blaney when they crashed in the final when they both spun in the final corner and they got into each other. Kyle Bush snuck by and took the win. You know, that's kinda like what it reminded me of. And also Tyler Reddick, Chase Briscoe, they kinda made up. They they shook hands, so everything's good there. Really like to see the good sportsmanship between those two. But I'm surprised that Reddick really isn't upset or anything because, you know, that was a spot for the that was a spot for the playoffs that he was racing for. So, you know, I I'm kind of surprised that we didn't see some emotion there. We could have at least saw some emotion there, but we didn't. But anyways, congratulations to Kyle Busch. I know all the Kyle Busch haters are... I know all the haters, a lot of the people that despise Kyle Busch are going to are going to be spamming are going to be spamming in the comments of these of these race review videos saying say, "Oh, Kyle Busch sucks. He's the worst driver ever. He's an absolute crybaby." It was a Mickey Mouse win. It was a Mickey Mouse win. He didn't deserve it. Yeah, a lot of people are going to say that, but Kyle Busch, I think he honestly kind of earned this race because, yeah, he didn't really, like, was that out front, but he was, like, in the top five for for some of the day. So, you know, he somewhat earned that race. I think he somewhat earned it. But, uh, yeah, we also had two rain delays that happened. Yeah, two of them. So that kind of pushed the race back. Despite the rain delays, it was a really good race. I mean, it, I would honestly rank it higher if, if it weren't for the rain. It, maybe if the rain what, didn't come into play, if, if we didn't have both those rain delays, this race would have probably been a lot higher on my rating. But I'm still probably going to, I'm still going to give it like a 7 or something. Like a 7 out of 10. I mean, it could have been an 8 or 9 if it weren't for the rain. But, you know, it was still a really good race. So, yeah, next week. Is sure to be a good one. We got Talladega next week. So yeah, looking forward to that. Also, happy Easter. I, mean, I This is a day after Easter, I know. I hope you all, but I hope all of you had a great Easter. I hope all of you went out there, went out there, hunted eggs, and like, find candy in the eggs, eat the candy, you know, have a good time. And overall, just have time, have a good time spending with your family and everything. So, uh, yeah, I did get a few things for Easter, but I think, but that's going to be for a different video. So, you know, I think I'm probably just going to show what I got for Easter. It's not much. I'm just going to say it's not much. Nothing really too exciting. So, but I do have stuff coming in the mail. So, so you know what? I think it's going to get better from here. Like, I'm just going to say, like, these, these gifts aren't, like, too amazing. So... But, like, I think, like, the more amazing gifts are coming in the mail. So, so yeah, hopefully those uh, those ship soon. But, uh, anyways, what a race. What an absolute race. That was, that was something. And, honestly, I would not mind seeing Bristol Dirt again. I mean, I mean, yeah, Bristol definitely might not be the best place to have a dirt race. But I guess NASCAR wants those bigger venues. They want those bigger racetracks. They want to have more people come. Like, I get it. But, you know, it would be nice if they could have, like, just, like, gone to Eldora or something. That would have been interesting. You know, hopefully maybe one day NASCAR will actually go to a full-blown dirt track one day. So, 
You know, I think dirt racing is going to stay on the Cup Series schedule for years to come because I can definitely feel this is going to be probably one of the new norms for NASCAR. I know dirt racing for, for the Cup Series is a very diverse, is a very diverse topic. I mean, you go on social media and you see so many people in different places. Like, some say dirt racing is fine for the Cup Series, while others say it's great, others say it's eh, and others say it's absolute garbage. And say that they shouldn't do it at all. Well, uh, I'm going to say right now where I'm at, I'm totally fine with, with Bristol on Dirt because it did put on a really good show, so... You know, I honestly think it should stay. I honestly think maybe it should stay, maybe it shouldn't. I mean, I don't think Bristol should stay as a dirt race for, like, ever, so. But, uh, you know, I definitely think that dirt racing should definitely stay on the Cup Series schedule, at least, like, one dirt race a year. I think that's really good. I also have been hearing that... uh we might get a street course next. I mean, they basically raced in football stadiums. They've raced on dirt. I definitely think the next one is a street course. And so we'll see what they choose for that. I've been hearing that Chicago is still probably the main place for them to have a street course. But I don't know. Chicago's kind of... I really don't know how to, how to put it. Let's just say Chicago is not the brightest, one of the brightest cities in the world. So, you know, I really don't know how that's going to work out. But, you know, there are other street courses that already exist. So maybe they could, like, go there or something. Or they could just do one in North Carolina. I've been kind of been, I've been kind of hearing. So, you know, do it at, like, NASCAR's, like, home place. I think that'd be a great place to start and... And like the dirt race, like just maybe have like one on the schedule. Don't go crazy and just like add a multiple of them. We don't need multiple street courses because that's just not NASCAR. It isn't. That's just not NASCAR because I get they want more road courses and everything. But can we like stick to like maybe more short tracks or something? Because, you know, the ovals are basically what built NASCAR. So, so, you know, if you get rid, of, get rid of most of the ovals, NASCAR just kind of loses that charm to it. But uh, anyways, so, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much all that. I think there was also something else that happened in the race between Cody Ware and Chase Elliott. I really don't know what to think about that. I think maybe Chase just got into, got into Cody, I guess. And, you know, it happened when Ricky Stenhouse Jr. spun out, so... Yeah, it looked like Cody Ware might have might have been might have been upset at Chase Elliott. Yeah, he was upset. Yeah, I Yeah, he was pretty upset with him. He almost dumped him. Yeah, he almost Yeah, he almost dumped him. But yeah, and also also I got to say this probably one of the biggest things about this race was seeing Daryl Waltrip return to the Fox Sports booth. Daryl I've missed you, buddy. I have missed you for so long. I'm so glad you're back. I mean, I have not heard I have not heard the boogity boogity for so long. I'm so glad I got to hear it again. And when that green flag dropped and I heard Daryl Waltrip say, boogity, 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 let's go racing boys. Like, oh my gosh, nostalgia hit me right there on those words. Because I remember hearing that at the beginning of every race on Fox when I was younger. So, you know, thanks for bringing that, thanks for bringing that back, Daryl. It was well needed. And also, during the rain delay, we saw Mike Joy, Daryl Waltrip, and Larry McReynolds in the booth together. I have not seen these three together since 2015. It has been so long since that has, since that's happened. Like I honestly think maybe they should, maybe Larry McReynolds should maybe come into the should come into the booth for a race. I mean, I would definitely like that. That he is he overall brings some good excitement. And he does bring up a lot of points and he's like cuz you know, he's like a crew chief and he's a, he's like a former crew chief and he's 
he knows everything behind the strategy and everything. And it would really help like the viewers know like the strategies, the pit stops and everything. So yeah, I think Larry Mack would be a great guy to have in the booth. But anyways, speaking of guys in the booth, it was announced that Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to be in the booth for the race at Talladega. And I am shocked by this because, remember, Dale Jr. is a commentator on NBC. So I don't even know how that happened. I mean, is he not really, like, on his contract when when NBC isn't on NASCAR yet? So when NBC hasn't covered NASCAR yet this season. So I guess Dale Jr. is free for the time until then. So I don't know how that happened. But I think Dale Jr. is like one of the big staples of NBC right now. Like, how did they get him? I really don't know. Like, Fox must have paid, a, must have paid some huge money to get Dale Jr. into the booth. Because that is insane. But I'm looking forward to that. Daryl Dale Jr. did really good in the NBC booth. So looking forward to seeing him in the booth for the race at Talladega. So, you know, that's great. I, I think this, this NASCAR on Fox rotating booth thing, I think it's working so far. We've seen some really good commentators. I think Tony Stewart's done a really good job. Danica did pretty okay at times. Matt Kenseth was, was pretty interesting to see in the booth at Auto Club. Let's see who else. Oh, Chad Knauss. It was cool to see him in the booth. I think he did a really good job. Jeff Gordon in the booth again. I thought he was all right. And now we got Daryl Waltrip. So, and I, I it definitely wasn't like prime Daryl Waltrip. I mean, it was still like 2018, 2019 Daryl Waltrip. You know, because, you know, I get it. He's getting old. So, you know, <laughs> He's kind of losing that, he's kind of losing that, that, like, charm to him. But, you know, as long as he can just say those words at the beginning, he put on a good performance tonight. So, so, uh, you know, I think this video's been longer than it should have. So, I don't think there's anything else I need to talk about. Is there anything for else for me to talk about? I mean, there were a lot of spins. There were a lot of spins that night, and... Oh yeah, at one point there was a crash and with uh Bowman, with Alex Bowman, Corey LaJoy, Kevin Harvick, and Noah Gregson. Noah Gregson almost flipped over. He was literally on the side, I believe he was on the side of Kevin Harvick's car. So uh yeah, that was that was interesting. We almost saw a flip on dirt. But uh yeah, so uh that's uh, pretty much it. So uh, overall, overall great race. I I hope all of you guys had a great Easter. I think I, I think I did with this race. I mean, this race honestly. I think this race honestly, pretty much gave me a really good Easter this year. So you know, this was definitely huge for NASCAR and to have a race on Easter. Very huge, very big deal, and I'm so glad I was able to watch it. So, so yeah, with all that, excuse me. So, with all of that out of the way, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss a video and all that. Planning to do more videos. I'm planning to make some, like, short little funny videos for the race at Bristol Dirt. You know, some little meme videos. I'll try to see if I can work on any of that. I mean, honestly, there's quite a bit of meme, mater meme material with this race. So, you know, I could do a few things for this. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. Anyways, this this video's gone on for long enough. I've been recording for like 14 minutes. So, uh, yeah, this has gone on for long enough. So, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Happy Easter. Peace.